Hello, Darren. Hi, Darren. You're you've thrown me. You've uh, you started straight. The, listeners, viewers, the minute he joined the meeting, we were arguing with each other. We were swearing, uh, and then he switches to two two boards to paint on, not one, two. I'm I'm expecting you can do these at once, and then he just says, "Let's start it now." So <laughs> this is a. I think well, I believe it's I mean, what called a cold this is start. Me starting, this is me starting to uh, um, paint for, for the exhibition. Two exhibitions, yes. hopefully. Hopefully an exhibition in uh, um, Barcelona and an exhibition in uh, South London. Uh, both where, this, this South London one, where, where is it going to be? Are you waiting to, so you I think I can sure. say now, I think it's, I think it's fairly definite. It's going to be a gallery called Art Dog. Art Dog, like Brew Dog, yeah. but with art. Uh, yeah, I suppose so. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, it's, I mean, it sounds like a silly thing to say, but I want, I want the exhibitions to be really good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't you? Would be the obvious really response. And and and, and but I still think there's something. I mean, I've done this in music before, where I thought, oh, you know what, I could do for the next album, make a really good one. <laughs> yeah, and so I, I sort of sort of wouldn't mind talking tonight about that in a way and about I don't know if you sit down and say right I'm going to do this it's going to be really good then it's probably not isn't it I mean art and music is a sort um, of yeah uh, I think with music there's, there's you can you can record something with the intention of it sounding really good and you can get that. Uh, but to write, to sit down and say, I'm going to write something really good is much harder. Well, I mean, I think, you know, we have to spend a bit of time thinking about what good even means and what, and what we mean when we use it, you know? So for instance, like in, 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 um, I don't know. Say, say, like here when we were doing the um, the toys for Christmas. Yeah, we were sort of mucking about a bit and having fun with it and doing very silly things. It was never impossible that I would have done my Mona Lisa during that project. It was never impossible. It was possible on any day that I might have done something. You know, I think this is the best painting I've ever done, but. If we're honest, the the odds were stacked against it a little bit because of subject matter approach, and that's not to say I was deliberately making them bad. Do you know what? Understand what I mean? Yeah, and I think it's that way with sort of songs as well. You could uh, you could uh, be one day say, "God, you know what? I think I want to do today. I think I want to do something really drony and dark. I only want it to have two chords." And there's all sorts of good reasons for wanting to make that, and there's all good reasons for that existing. But the likelihood of it being your one song that was going to win the Ivan Novella Prize for songwriting is is sort Slim. of unlikely, isn't it? Yeah. So there's those things to consider, and I suppose what I'm I'm I suppose what I'm thinking of doing here is I'm thinking of doing. I suppose what I'm thinking of doing is I'm doing a set of work that I think. is the most popular work I do, I think. Well, not even popular, actually. It's the, it's, it's the ones that seems to get most sort of comments on, oh, I like these ones. These, and we're talking about, of course, my night paintings, if it isn't obvious already from the screen, what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, 
so I suppose that's a strange thing in itself to be doing uh, um, to, 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 to be deliberately trying to repeat yourself doing your greatest hits well a little bit I mean the funny thing was is I was looking through my iPad to find because with these paintings I like to work well I was thinking about well I was thinking about we could talk about this as well actually but I like to I like the source material to be my own yeah yeah so when we're when we're mucking about doing you know ZX spectrums and stuff I'm often just finding an image and painting it much as you are yeah. for a lot of things like I'm doing and that. I've got no, yeah. and I've got no problem with that. You know, I think we've, yeah. we've talked about this before. I'm not snobby about, but, but with the night paintings, I feel I want it to be from a photograph I've taken. I want part of doing these paintings is going out and finding the source material. Yeah. Yeah. You're, I don't you're, know why actually. Well, I think, but, but it makes sense to me because you, you, the end, they end up being personal because they're, they're of generally of where you live or where you stayed. Um, and so all, that gives it personal yeah. thing. It's not like you're not, you're, cho you're already choosing uh, the image. You're selecting uh, before you even take the photograph. Uh, whereas exactly. when we're painting there's, there's other something. people's photographs. Yeah, I think there's something weird. very particular about what makes one of these scenes. And I think when I, if I type in like windows at night into Google, I don't see them. There's, there's something very right. particular that I want that I'm looking for. Yeah. Um, and so anyway, I was looking through, uh, you know, my phone because I tend to take these photographs when I see them. Although I must say, I haven't been taking them all year round. It's been a while since I did these paintings, so I have kind of fallen out of the habit. Yeah. And I actually wasn't really fine. Like, then I had the decision, like, I found some good ones, but they were ones I'd painted before. So then, right. I, was faced well. with, then I was faced with the idea, oh, shall I actually repaint some of the compositions that previously worked? Which is another thing for me to consider when you're talking about doing the greatest hits. Well, I think you should do if you like them. Uh, it's very common, isn't it, for for great painters to have done that. There's no reason why mere mortal artists like ourselves can't can't do the same thing. I think there's an important um, there's an important way of phrasing it. I suppose. I mean, I think like a lot of painters do the same sort of painting over and over again, almost like as a motif. The idea is like, I'm exploring this theme. I'm trying to get this painting right. You know, like the fall, yeah. you know, yeah, the, fall like had the, fall, once, yeah. the fall spent a whole career trying to get one song, right. And I, yeah. I, I don't mean that as any disrespect to the fall. You know, I think that was a, a I think that's a really good idea for a career in music. But I think there's like a difference between that and just saying, oh, that good painting, I'm going to try and do it again and do it like that. So I think if my approach well, is, if my, if my approach is the former, I think it's allowed. Well, there is, but there is a history of artists doing, I mean, how many versions of, of, of the scream did Edvard Munch paint? <laughs> yeah, so, sure. But I mean, more than one, there was more than two, he, more than three. Yeah, but he wasn't doing it because he thought, oh, I've sold that one uh, six months ago. I'll do another one and sell it next week. He was just, he was obsessed, wasn't he? He was obsessed with that image and getting it right. Right, yeah. And well, that's I, what I'm saying. Yeah, There's a slight difference. I think what I'm trying to say is for me to do a painting again, there has to be an artistic reason I'm doing it again, not just a purely oh, I, I, I painted it again because I didn't have it for this exhibition. Does that make sense? It makes sense, yeah. I, I don't necessarily agree, I, okay. but it makes sense. I understand why you, why you say that, yeah. But I think if, if you did, did a painting that you liked uh, in sort of like postcard size or A5 and it sold and you would really like that, that image for an exhibition, 
paint it again. I mean, you paint, you'll be painting it bigger, I expect, anyway. Yeah, these are, these, are, these are A4. I don't know, I don't know yeah. how obvious these things are on our YouTube screen. Presumably my hand has some sense of scale, doesn't it? Yeah, your, your tiny, tiny hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, what are you doing anyway? Can you tell? Can you see who that is? Can you oh, see your screen first? It's very familiar. It's a little air of Jack Lemon about him. There is, but it's not him. It's okay, um. You do you do a bit more, and I'll come in for another guess. Okay, seconds. yeah. Uh, I was watching him last night. That's uh, on YouTube, so it wasn't like you can have a guess from what was on telly last night. But um, yeah, I think ooh. Another thing I'm doing is uh, the exhibition in, uh, if it hopefully happens, the exhibition that's happening in Barcelona is um, with another artist. Ah, I'm, I'm, I'm not quite a friend, but someone I know. I've, or I've, or I've met him twice, I think, is probably the best yes. way to say. And uh, I was saying, well, what are you doing and what are you showing? Can we make it work together? And he right, didn't yeah. seem too bothered about that. He's like, well, well, you know, it's not that. It's just two people who know each other yeah. showing that work. Yeah. But I still think there could be some kind of synchronicity. And I said, well, look, let me deal with that then. Let me have a look at what you're doing. And so his paintings, I think it's the series is called something like Laughing and, Laughing and Crying or Laughing and Crying. So what he's doing is, it's not dissimilar to you. I think he's kind of freezing videos of yeah. people, possibly his own, and finding these expressions where it's kind of hard to tell whether they're laughing or crying. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, anyway, his palette is not dissimilar from what you can hopefully see on the screen. And he's got no black. The black would be the difference. He's using yeah. lots of yellows and yellow ochre. So I'm just going to sort of, for at least for the first few, try and look for uh, uh, arrangements of lights that have those sort, that sort of palette in them. Yeah. Right, now let's have, let, me, let me have another look up here. Um, let me have a look at my screen and see if I, because I've not looked at your screen for a bit, so can I have, can have a go at guessing who this is? Well, he is very, very familiar. <laughs> you know who this person you, you do know this person certainly. he's got a kind face there hasn't he I think it's interesting what sometimes gives it away with portraiture like you can probably see it's clearly him but there might be something about the hairline that makes me go oh right yeah I'm worried I'm running out of space for the hairline I've, I've made him a little bit too big <laughs> so you might not even get much of the hairline a little bit of it. His hair is actually different from what we, slightly different from what we often see it as. For this guy. Yeah. I'm drinking a 0% beer. I did that last night. What have you yeah. drinking? Um, where's the cam? Let's give a shout out to whoever it is. Uh, Brulo, dry hopped stout, 0%. Say, what's a 0% stout like? Well, I mean, is it I mean, okay? We have this, huh? Is it okay? It's okay. You know, it's like, I don't know what I would drink if I really became sober. I don't know. I see people, I, I've got a few friends that are dry now. And I see them sort of, oh, this one's good. This this one's really good. And they're sort of saying, this is a good stout there. And, and then you taste it and you're like, you know what? You, you've, you've forgotten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you've kind of forgotten what this is supposed to taste like. But that's a that's whole wow. thing. Because, like, you know, people have got very, very good reasons to not drink. And, and I don't want to do anything to dissuade anyone who's trying not to drink. Um, well, when I had that the low low alcohol one last night, it was point zero five, so 
Or is it point yes, five? I think I think that's interesting, isn't it? I think a lot of the they they are low alcohol because I think they find it almost impossible. I think it's like incredibly hard to get close to what they're trying yeah. to do with like no alcohol. So I think a lot of these beers have like just 0.5. And I don't know what the reasoning for that is. I don't know mm. what it is that's so hard. Like it would it seem to me that like 0.5 is near near enough to nothing. So why not just make it nothing? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they can't. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I drank it and my first taste of it was like, oh, oh yeah, that's good that. By the end of it though, I was just wondering that I, it was just like, why? I just, I'll just have a cup of tea next time. I think this is kind of what I'm saying. I'm, I'm wondering if, 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 if I'm possibly, you know, maybe I will at some point, maybe I will sort of uh, give up drinking. Um, there's more and more reasons to, isn't there, as we get older? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think, would I sort of enjoy these? beers or would i just you know like you say just get more deeper into tea although you know i am pretty deep into tea <laughs> <laughs> yeah they see it, it, i mean the, the funny thing with me is that it's i'm i'm a coffee drinker so i would generally you know get deeper into coffee but of course i've cut out caffeine as well Purely for well, medical reasons. Yeah, I mean, well, this is also... Oh, so, well, actually, today... Two I've things had, I really like. Yeah, t- today I've had a 0% uh, beer, and I've also had a uh, um, decaf coffee today. Right. No, I think... See, I think decaf, uh, I must admit, to me, it just tastes just like coffee. Um, the only thing is there's uh, much less choice. So, whereas when I was buying coffee with caffeine, you'd go into the supermarket and the shelves would be full of all these different packets and choices and different yeah. strengths yeah. and roasts and stuff. And it's always nice to try something different. And uh, now I'm on decaf. Uh, are, uh, my supermarket has literally just two kinds of decaf coffee. And that's it. Yeah. There's much less room for experimentation and finding new stuff. I suppose the weird thing is, isn't it, that like both both drinks, like beer, or maybe this is wrong, maybe this is what's wrong about my outlook. It's like the drinks have a function as well as a taste. Like I do really like stouts and I do really like beer and I think I am – you know, not the world's lead next, but I think I'm something of a connoisseur of some beers now. I think I know a little more than some people do. I shouldn't say that now. I'm going to make a fool of myself, say something wrong. But <laughs> I'm I'm drinking beer for, I'm not just drinking it for the taste. I'm drinking it for another reason as well. It relaxes me and da da da, and I like the feeling it gives me. And likewise with coffee, I wake up in the morning and I want my coffee but it's not just about wanting the taste. It is about what it does to me. Well, yeah, you would think so as well, and I would have thought so. But having switched to decaf and that very first day that I had decaf and I had a coffee in the morning, I didn't notice any difference in myself whatsoever, except um, I wasn't getting really weird, massively strong heartbeats anymore. <laughs> well, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, anxiety is the reason why I didn't have it today. Yeah, uh, yeah. So it's, um, I think it's, I'm not really sure I was drinking it for what it did to me. I think right. I was just drinking it because I like the taste. And maybe it's you, just you, a mental you think, thing. You know? Do you think in a kind of almost like a placebo way, some of what I, it was doing for you still does anyway? Do you feel like... I wonder if it does... Of- Yes, so I, it I might wasn't do. Sure this morning. I mean, like I say, the reason why I was drinking decaf this morning, re- reason why I'm drink, drinking decaf at the moment is I'm just, a, you know, for, for various reasons, I'm a bit angsty at the moment. Um, but I still thought this morning, oh God, I still still feel like I've had a coffee a little bit. But that's hard for me to judge because, like I say, I'm I'm a bit angsty at the moment. Yeah. No, I think um, 
feels to me like it. Yeah, maybe it's placebo. I also have a sugar in coffee, so I right. Wonder so if that's happening. Anyway. That yeah. Thing. yeah, 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 yeah. So can you? I must admit, this portrait hasn't quite turned out a, a great. Like uh, I haven't looked for a while. Sorry, let me look again. Oh, who is that? Got a Just YouTube channel. He's a guitar player. Oh, is it Robert Fripp? It is Robert Fripp, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite what I was... I've done it too big. I'm normally... I've got really good recently at getting the, exactly judging, the right size. The yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, that's also, that also relates to what's happening over here on this screen. Um, when I was doing these before, I was planning the pages out and I was putting little dots and trying to work out the pages. I'm trying my hardest not to. Right. Because, I don't know, because of all those Spain pictures I did recently, I didn't. And I was just starting to like not doing that. How clear if you were looking at uh, my my page, how clear is the sort of geography of objects? Yeah, yeah. I can you know. I can like, do, do you feel like that? you yeah. can tell what kind of house this is, for instance? Well, that's a big bare window, is it, that you've painted? No, not not quite. No. No, it isn't actually. Um is it a semi-detached or a detached? Then? Yeah, it is. There's yeah. a sort of house here. Yeah. Which, actually, I don't know if it is. I think it might be one big house, but certainly right. all the lights on this side are out. It's, yeah, also, yeah, yeah. it's also, which I don't know whether the painting will be able to tell, but it's a very empty house. Right. And now looking at it, it looked like building work was going on. So I think, you know, it was like a house that was being refurbed. But I can see a car yeah. in a driveway, so I'm a bit confused about that. But these are the <laughs> sort of things I quite enjoy about these paintings anyway, that we can try and tell a little story somehow. You yeah. know, like configurations of lights <laughs> might even give us a clue as to the type of people living there. I'm going to colour this in now. I don't normally do. Hard to explain. I've got a very specific idea about how I want these to work. And I don't know if I'll be able to explain it until I've done it. When it's like, okay, that's what I'm after. I want these sort of marks I'm making, these brush strokes, to look quite, quite quick and expressive. But the but the collision of them tell us a little story. Right, okay. So I'm gonna go down here now. Uh why is uh, Robert Fripp on your mind? I was watching a King Crimson concert on YouTube last night. Ah. I don't really know and, much uh, about it. No, on me neither. I know the uh, tune twenty first century Skitside Man. Um uh, but apart from that, I know nothing of their music, and YouTube just suggested it to me, and uh, I idly put it on, and uh, it was an hour. It's like oh, well over an hour long, and I didn't, I hadn't intended watching <coughs> something that long at that time of night, getting right. on. But it took, it literally took me about half an hour before I could finally. Say no, I've got to turn this off now, Darren. Come on, because um, it was good. Because it was good. Yeah, it was really, so really good. Tell me what you're watching again. It was a uh, King Crimson uh, in Munich, uh, 1982. And where would I find and this? Band, it's on YouTube. You will okay. find it in the, uh, the links of uh, this video as well once it's published. Uh, the band was uh, Robert Fripp, of course. A bit like yeah. um, The Fall, isn't it? If it's uh, Robert Fripp and your well, granny see, on I don't, bongos, I don't know. still that, King that's Crimson. How, that, that's how little I know about them. So so, so you say that. And, and, and yes, the yeah. only member of Robert, um, 
King Crimson that I, I know for certain is Robert Fripp. Yeah. You, you, could he, you could have easily suddenly said another name and like, oh yeah, of course he was in King, King Crimson. Right. Well, I do know that, that he's kind of the the common thread that runs through King Crimson. Right. Um, the rest of the band were Bill Bruford on drums. Okay. Uh, he was also in Yes, uh, and he's played. Right. He's one of the regular names uh, that pop up with King Crimson, I think. Yeah. Uh, the bass player was Tony Levin. Uh, do you know Tony Levin? No, not really. He plays uh, for um, Peter Gabriel. Oh, ah! Uh, the bald guy with the tash. I was just about to say, does he play for... Um, yeah, Peter Gabriel. Doesn't he, he has a very high up stance, doesn't he? He has that bass hoisted yes. up high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like, he was, which also, in, some way, in a weird way, sort of also tells you what sort of player he is for some reason. The people well, who often, hoist the bass up high. Well... No, the, the, actually, the thing is, when he's playing his normal bass, um, it's kind of a, it's not a ridiculously high height, like, say, like, Mark King has it. Um, yeah. But he's often playing a Chapman stick. Oh, uh, dear, Which has dear. to be held fairly high. Do you know a Chapman stick? Yeah, of course I do, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, um, and the guitar player on this gig uh, was Adrian Bellew. A bell you don't know how you pronounce it. Okay. Right. I mean, actually, do um, know, I do know or of most of those musicians, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. So is he playing and the he stick? Started is, off. He, is he playing the stick last night then? Is he? Yeah. Most, he was alternating between stick and the real bass. Um, it started off with him. The first track was him on stick. But the, the way it began was Bill Bruford just walked out to the front um, and started playing these like Simmons pads. <laughs> Ooh. And then, and it's it was all really, really very like um, Steve Reich, right? Um, and Philip Glass and Terry Riley. There was just a really repetitious sort of pattern that was would slightly change. And then Adrian Bellew comes on stage. He he does a little bit of singing, but then he turns around. He's standing next to Bill Bruford on the opposite side of these pads grabs another pair of sticks and starts playing the pads as well. So they both playing this crazy syncopated <laughs> rhythm that was really hypnotic. And then <laughs> uh, Tony Levin walks on and starts tapping out this, this melody on the Chapman stick. And it was just, it was great. It was really not what I was expecting. I thought that King Crimson... I thought it was going to be some really, really hard prog rock. And but what it was was just all these fascinating musical rhythms. Um, that was, yeah, like I say, it was so hypnotic. It, it was really hard for me to turn it off because I, I kept having to see what happened next because this stuff evolved over time. And there were moments where they they did display their technical prowess because you'd be listening to it, just getting lost in this, this kind of ever evolving wall of sound. Yeah. But then they just, they just, they could stop all <laughs> exactly at the same place. And you're thinking, how did they know where to stop? It's just, <laughs> there must be so much counting going on in that. It was really, you know, there was some, really or they have some, or they have some little cues maybe. Yeah, it's probably like more like visual that. Visual cues, you know. Somebody yeah, it could be. Cover and you haven't seen that look. And the audience yeah. hasn't even seen that look, but they... And of course, uh, amongst that, all, all that, you've got Robert Fripp, uh, who famously uh, sits down at gigs. Um, he's sitting on his chair in a suit and a bow tie <laughs> playing, playing his guitar. <laughs> with Is it a is it wrong that the fact he sits down put puts me off him a little bit? It's not. It's not wrong um, because I understand it. I understand it totally. I don't, I don't. I can't articulate why I think it's kind of cheating. <laughs> that's just, <laughs> I know. It's a stupid thing to say. Of course, it's not cheating. But it just something. You can't put your finger on why it's annoying you. And it's like, well, what, what do you yeah. mean? 
can't stand up and play guitar. I mean, what? Of course you oh, can. Weird, isn't it? But it's just, um, I, it feels, it's, it, I, I know his reasons for doing it in terms of it's, he's got his guitar at the optimum position and he does have some rather, rather long sort of stretches between notes well, and strings. It, well, and it's, it's, it's not rock, is it? That's what it is. It's not rock. You know, no. There's some, something very un-rock and roll about saying, I'm going to sit down because it's, you know, rock should never be about comfort. I always think that, I, no. I, I don't know if you remember, I had a little rant about this on the, on Twitter a while ago with when I was finding, I was finding loads of pictures of the ox with his drinks oh. containers. Yes, that's so, right. So John Entwistle through his career had these two drinks on his microphone stand with, 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 uh, sort of straws coming out and people saying to me, Oh, you know, I think one's brandy and one's whiskey. It's like, I don't care. It doesn't make any difference whether it's water or whatever. It's like, it's just like the comfort of this guy is more important than the the plane or something. And yeah, it, yeah, yeah. And the implication in that as well, because they were they were like sports bottles, weren't they? Yeah, kind that of a goalkeeper might have been. In yeah, the back of his net. Um, the implication is that he needs to drink so much that he can't possibly wait till the songs ended to just grab. Grab a bottle of Heineken or something. He's got all to the, be drinking oh, it while he's playing. Yeah, or, or these songs are so long that I can't possibly Maybe. wait to the end of the song. Yeah. But it's yeah. just it's just something about it sort of smacks of some kind of privilege. Yeah. And I think the same. I think I think the same about um Frip sitting down. <laughs> I yeah. just think the rest of us have to stand up, mate. It's fucking stand up and play your guitar. Well, it does feel like it's a bit of an affectation as well, though, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It does. There's a documentary out soon, if not already, about King Crimson that looks brilliant. The trailer for it is just band member upon band member upon band member saying how difficult it was to work with Robert Fripp. <laughs> and and Robert Fripp say, also saying how difficult it was to work with him. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's really odd because we we know him from his YouTube channel with Toya, where he's just no. this uh, slightly bemused old chap. I mean, I think most people, if they're honest, I mean, I think if you say Robert Fripp to most people or certainly sort of people, our people on Twitter and stuff, I think most people know Robert Fripp from Heroes by David Bowie, don't they? I think that's the, isn't that the most well-known thing that Robert Fripp has uh, done? Well, I don't know. Because it wasn't, I don't, I didn't know that was him. So. Oh, uh, okay. I know, I do know. I knew when you told me, I, don't, I already knew by then, but it took me a long time to find that out. Um, <laughs> so, um, I always think of that as very frippy guitar, but it, it, it might not be. It might, no, it it might not be as usual as I think it is. Well, if you, if watching the um, King Crimson gig, that he, there are moments where that guitar sound is, yeah, yeah, you can tell it's him. Yeah. Does he use an Ebo quite a bit? Um, he does in Heroes, and he didn't have the gig that I saw, but there are some rather interesting electronic sounds that he's, yeah, you know, he's one for certainly into his effects, as is Adrian Bellew as well. He's going absolutely crazy when he's playing his, and playing with feedback and stuff. Really good. But I'm, all of a sudden, King Crimson have become a band that I'm going to look into a little bit more now. How do you think I'm doing over here? I think you're doing really well and surprisingly quickly as well. Well, this is the thing about the, these paintings. I mean, <laughs> in some way, by uh, in some ways, by doing them on 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 this YouTube channel, I might. Do you know what I mean? Be seeing the glimpse oh, yeah. behind the curtain a little bit because 
you know, sometimes <laughs> what they are is they can be very, very few marks. Yeah. You know, and but that's sort of the trick. The trick is finding the right image where you do only need a few a few a few marks to make out the picture. So what I'm thinking is I haven't got good enough pictures. So I'm thinking actually part of the work for this exhibition is just going to be going out at night and just Yeah. It's almost like better times of night as well. Like if you go out in the early evening, too many yeah. of the lights are on in the houses that so you can't get those like really cool isolated ones. Right. Okay. What's the, what's the score around there? Do people shut the curtains or do they <laughs> leave them open? The lights on. Yeah, a bit of both. Um, bit of both. It is weird, isn't it? When you can see right away in. I remember well, before when I was doing these paintings, I remember one painting where from the photograph, you could clearly see that something about the quality of the light or where it was coming from the room, you could clearly see that uh, a television was on. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I quite like that. I quite thought that was quite interesting. If, 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 if I don't think I, I don't think I'd ever want to, as, as per usual, really, I don't think I'd ever want to paint a person in one of these. Yeah. Um, but I like the idea that you might be able to tell a little bit more than just where the lights are on. That you might go, okay, look, that looks like a teenager's room because of what? Just because of something about the square of light. Yeah. Or something. I'm kind of interested yeah. in things like that. I'd really, really like, like to see a silhouette in one of those. <laughs> yeah. I think it would be too. I don't know. Is it too hopper? No, well, people do say Hopper in relation to these. Um, uh, often when people say these are Hopper-esque, and I don't mind that. I don't mind that. Uh, but I think may maybe you are right. Maybe it is too Hopper, because maybe the, the thing that I think, uh, the thing that stops these being uh, Hopper is um, there's no people in them. <laughs> There's a thing. Are, um, are there always people in Hopper's paintings? Feels like there is. I I only know the one, Darren. <laughs> you only know the one. <laughs> the only one I could think of was it Nighthawks. Yeah, I'm sure you've seen others though. Probably see. I could I'd probably see another and and tell straight away it's him. But I can only think of that. Okay, one. all right. Let's uh, let, let, let's let's uh, let's uh, write this wrong. Let's write this wrong right now. Just, just wait there a second. I'll go to the. Uh, I'm going to go to the uh, Brentwood Tuxedo Library. Oh, he's got a book. Got a book, listeners. Well, I think I have. I hope I can find it quicker. <laughs> it's just next to your Jack Vetriano collection. <laughs> well, the, no, there is. They, they, they aren't unrelated, are they? They're not, are they? No. Uh, I think Hopper's miles better. Um, right, okay. Um, oh, well, actually, here's one. Well, this does, is, is along the same lines, isn't it? All right. Well, there's people in those, those windows. Yeah. Yeah. I think... There are certainly what, some not, without, what his there paintings are. Certainly are. Some without people in. There are some like this. Right. Without people in. Well, ah, what I think go. of when oh, I think look, of here we, go. here we go. That's still that's still there might as well be a person in that. It gives there me the same person. feeling. There's a, there's a woman oh, is there? bending over. Oh here yeah. In a, in Perfect. Um because that's the thing, isn't it? I think Hopper's night paintings are the ones I know of. Well, obviously. That I've just seen and know Nighthawk. Yeah. They're quite voyeuristic, aren't they? Well, I mean, I think there's something voyeuristic about what I'm doing here. Um, there is there is quite a thing when I'm taking these photographs. Like I definitely don't want someone to catch me. And I am no. so I do no. I do live in fear slightly of getting uh, you know, somebody saying, Why are you taking pictures of these houses at night? But and I also sort of want them to be I mean, some people have asked me, I have done a couple of commissions where I've sort of painted someone's house. Did I tell you about that one where 
oh, it took ages to do. So this guy wanted me to paint his daughter's flat in the style of one of these. Right. And, you know, like, well, how are we going to get the, 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 you know, the source material? But he, she lived near me here. He knew where I lived. But it wasn't that near. It was like yeah. about a 10-minute walk. And so I would go out at night, you know, and go take Minnie on a walk and walk up there. And, you know, they'd be out or something, or the wrong light would be on. <laughs> <laughs> and it gives quite a battle. <laughs> and then and he he was also finding it funny, you know. And I said, look, I, I think this is going to be quite hard to, you know, to, to, to find your daughter. You know, what time do they go to bed? I was asking questions like this. And it was, yeah, it was really <laughs> quite voyeuristic. <laughs> what time did he go to bed? <laughs> Are you on a staircase? We got it in the end. I don't know. I, he must have had a conversation with her and as, ascertained what she was doing. Because I suddenly got this email one night. He goes, I think if you go around now, there will be a light on and it'll be right to do it. You know, <laughs> But it was also a little tricky. It was a tricky commission as well because, you know, like this, this painting I'm doing now is something, you know, it's like one photo I've taken out of sort of maybe 50 I've taken. And I've rejected lots of, I don't know, there's something sort of every man I want about the houses. I mean, this is this is clearly a house that me or you could never afford to live in. Right. But I yeah. still I, I still want them to be sort of in our world. I was walking through Dulwich with Nick the other night and saying, What about that one? And he thought it was really good, but I said, Yeah, it's just it's just too rich. Yeah. You know, I just don't really want to paint someone's mansion or country country pile, you know. But I th yeah, I think I, if you added people into those rooms, I think maybe it might be a bit too creepy, too voyeuristic. Yeah, I, I've no idea what uh, Hopper's doing in terms of how his uh, how real those landscapes are. It does look as it does with Ventriano. It does look a, something a little bit made up about them sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, he might have like studied a house but put a different background. I don't know. The book's right here, I suppose. I suppose I could probably read it and find out. It looks something slightly imagined about the landscapes. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me at all. So I've been continuing my um Exploration of classical music. You've been listening to uh, today. I listened to "The Lark Ascending" by Vaughan Williams. Oh, okay, yeah. Which, yeah, yeah, I think a lot of people will have heard of that. Um, it was really good. It's very nice, um, and there's a beautiful, uh, uh, like pink skies as I was listening to it, as the sun was setting. <laughs> So it's kind of like um, the music accompanied the uh, outdoor view beautifully. And then I listened to um, a couple of concertos by Benjamin Britten, and I loved them. I think um, I think Benjamin Britten might be my man. They were really... Hey, what's what's the hit? Uh, I, I I can't. I'm not. I'm not going to even pretend to be. No, I'm not. I'm just not going to. I don't know much about classical at all, but I'm not no. often going to 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 join in here. But can you sing one? I'd know. No, <laughs> I can't. No, because um, I know very little about him. When was uh, he? Uh, when was he alive? When was he uh, composing? 20th century. That's what I thought. Um, and he was certainly composing, I think, before, during, after the Second World War. Right. I'll tell you what you will probably know 
Uh, I'm just going to, I'm going to have to check this on my iPad because I don't want to give the wrong information, right? Um, but Night Mail, yes, the Night Mail, famous film, 1936. Oh, yeah. You know yeah, about the, how the post is delivered. Yeah, I've got it. With um, who did the words? Um, W. H. Arden. Oh, okay. Wrote the screenplay. Yeah, and Benjamin Britten did the music. So you'd know that. Uh, the one I listened to, these concertos, they were. Wonderfully angular and slightly dissonant and a little bit aggressive. They were that's it, they were string quartets. Really, really, really good. It it kind of grabbed me in a way that a lot of other stuff I've listened to hasn't really grabbed me. It's been nice, you know, it's all been nice and interesting to listen to, but that was the first one that made me go, whoa. What is this? Need to hear more of this. So that's my tip for the top. <laughs> Roman Benjamin Britten. Not having a good drawing evening tonight. Well, I feel like I've fucked mine up slightly here. I feel like I've squidged this window up down here. So. Do you? Which this one? Like a, the one down the big one, it's Batia Square. If you yeah. look at the top, I brought this down too much with the black. I really like uh, that, though. I think it's I'm, really I'm trying kind to, of graphic. Yeah, I'm trying to decide. See, this is something I'm trying to decide. I'm trying to decide how, how square and correct and everything perspective should be. Because obviously yeah. I'm capable of doing that. I could sort of plan this picture out and even use light pencil lines and, and get it properly so it sits, so it looks kind of almost like coal-filled-like, you yeah. know? But then I'm, you know, I'm thinking about all those Spanish paintings that I enjoyed doing recently and and the fact that enough, I, I, that I didn't plan anything. I didn't plan the page out at all. I just put paint onto, onto paper. I'm sort of thinking I, I want a little bit of that that going on here. I think I'd like to put, I think the, the one in South London perhaps needs more, I think 10 of these should be enough for the Barcelona one. I yeah. also want to be able to take it in one suitcase. <laughs> yes. I want it to not be too expensive to take there. Another rather average drawing. This my mojo's gone. I've lost my mojo. Disaster. You said you said you felt like you had a mojo that was here to stay. Well, it is. It is really. <sighs> what a funny drawing. If nothing else. Let me have a look at the screen. I haven't looked at the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Bruce Willis? No, it's another Robert Fripp. He's <laughs> <laughs> not working I'm out sorry. very well. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I've already said it's uh, not going well, so you're allowed to. I just think it's actually, I uh, actually just sort of imagine, can you sort of see, yeah. when people do that, can you sometimes see what they're seeing? 
Yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think this is. I think this is. Sometimes it's the it, it's the incongruity of who you're trying to do against who. It sometimes accidentally looks like it is sometimes too good. You know, just some something very funny. I mean, it is completely believable how from you in one drawing night you might do Robert Fripp and then do yeah. Bruce Smith. That seems totally yeah. in your wheelhouse. <laughs> Have you ever done Bruce Willis? I think that's no, I haven't. No, it's on the list now, though. I tell you what, one. I think one thing I've noticed some of my recent Brentwood drawings is that they're not as good as my off-camera drawings. Ah, uh, that's interesting, I don't interesting, know why that is. Yeah. That's interesting. I don't I'm not quite sure about that with me. I think there's definitely are times when we're doing, like when we're doing the Christmas ones where it seems in the spirit of what we're doing to muck about a bit. Yeah, so I I'm think they were successful. I mean, they're successful in what they were supposed to be, you know. Yeah. Um, but I was thinking the same about this, actually. I, I very much wanted to start work on this. But you might be right. I could imagine myself getting to a stage with these where, like, I think I've sort of convinced myself that talking doesn't distract me. But it might not be true. Yeah, yeah. Um, there are many things wrong with this drawing that make me laugh, but I do think part of it is I've not been giving it my full attention. And I think that what works with a lot, particularly actually the Christmas tie drawings, is that they were kind of. Oh, that's a term. I don't want to say flippant. I don't want to say oh, we've just thrown them off because that could kind of insult the viewers. But um, there was a lightheartedness to them when we were making them. And, well, um, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and also here, with what I'm doing here, see, I... I can see it working both ways. I could see, like, if I did them away from Brentwood Tuxedo without the camera, I could see myself getting a little bit too overwrought about them. Right. So, like, I think both things are possibly true, that it might be better that I do all the paintings for this exhibition with the camera on me and me performing. I don't think our viewers would want to see... <laughs> would want to see what? 20 night paintings in what? a row. Darren, there's, there's only three of them. <laughs> Let me put it another way, Darren. I don't think I'd want to see 10, 20 night paintings <laughs> in a row. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. okay. You're probably right anyway. I probably shouldn't, you know, I probably should break up what I'm doing for my own sanity, shouldn't I? Yeah. Although I also do like the idea of being, you know, quite obsessed about a thing. All right, okay. So look here. This one isn't finished. This this here is too too dark. I want this yeah. whiter here. But I think I I think I'd like I think I just need it to dry because the white just isn't impacting on it. Um, what's I doing? <laughs> oh, yeah, this is good. Okay, let's do this one. We might be the only two people uh, in the country tonight. Who aren't watching Happy Valley? 
Ah. Um, I only know one thing about it. Well, I, I guess I know two things about it. Um, mm-hmm. it's, it's Sarah Lancaster, isn't it? Who used to be mm-hmm. in Coronation Street. Yeah. And, and she is a police lady. That's correct. To use the woke term. <laughs> Do you not say police woman? I think you say, I think you just say gender neutral police officer, don't you? She is a police officer. This is true. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm just going to go and uh, <laughs> change my water and wash, wash my brushes. I'll be back in a sec. Okay. Not not coming together for me. Drawing tonight, as discussed. I've done some really good stuff. Recently. What you've seen tonight, um, not included in that list of really good stuff. <laughs> Oh, oh, it works. Guess who's back? Shade is back. <laughs> um, but but uh, your better half watches Happy Valley. Yeah, yeah, she loves. And it. is it like the last episode tonight or something? Is it the as they say, it's the finale. And is it the finale finale? Like the last ever, 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 ever? I believe so, yeah, yeah. I think there's been three series and they've been building up to this uh, this okay. final episode. So I could just uh, put it on tomorrow and spend all day watching it and catch up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be honest, the first two series, Becky watched um, pretty recently. She, yeah. They were her... When we would be doing Drawing Club on a Sunday night, she'd be watching Happy Valley. Right. Until eventually she's caught up and just in time for the new series. Yeah, she's been a she was a, a drawing club widow. I've been watching The Last of Us, as have a lot of people. They'll enjoy it. Um, Well, I mean, I always say that I like anything, which is... I I, I sort of pretend I I, I love zombies. I don't really like zombies. It's just that zombies are usually set in, um, you know, uh, a pop apocalyptic dystopias and that's and that's, that's what, what i, like. what I, really, that's what I yeah, really like yeah i don't really like the zombies so much as i like you know the abandoned supermarkets and and things like that yeah 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 the shopping mall yeah which well, was there's that, one, that there's one zombie fi- one zombie film which is completely set in a shopping mall isn't there yeah is it dawn of the dead yeah one of them yeah yeah a, yeah i think it is you need a better really film, good yeah. as well that really good yeah, yeah. Quite funny that one, isn't it? There are there are two different cuts, and I've only seen the version with fewer jokes in it. Oh, okay, because um, that the you got the original American version that was I think was funny, um, or more funny, and then Dario Argento did a cut for Italian cinema, which. Uh, okay. Pushed the horror a bit more and took 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 some of the jokes out. Uh, mm. But it's still but, amusing in the the the, the um. <laughs> you can still kind of get it. So there's a satire about American consumerism going on. Well, right, yeah. Um, um so. Uh, the Last of Us does a sort of I don't uh, I don't know how much you know about it, but it does a slightly different thing with the zombies. Yeah, I played the game, so I know. Oh, of course you have. Yeah, we have talked about this. Clickers. 
Yeah. Yes, of course we have. Sorry. We've not talked about it on Brentwood Tuxedo. <laughs> when we say like that, things like that, I reckon people are like, Jesus, do they do this and not film it as well? Like, <laughs> <laughs> a few hours a week, they talk to five people on YouTube. And what do they do? Do they rehearse? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fairly clear we don't. <laughs> Yeah. <sighs> Let me have a look at it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I, I know Becky does this sometimes, but there's something about your painting. Your, this painting's really tickled me. <laughs> I'm committing. I'm committing to it as well, aren't I? I'm keeping going. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You definitely, you know, there was definitely a point after about two minutes where you said this one isn't working. Yeah. <laughs> I think it benefits from from me carrying on with it. Well, actually, it does. It does. Um, it is amusing. <sighs> Tell you one thing about painting in, in in acrylic is you know you do have to change your clothes. I'm hearing all my paint gear. You know, you, it, I it used proper, to wear an apron. It proper ruins stuck clothes. This place. Yeah, yeah. I've got an apron that I. Used to put on when I painted in acrylic. See, even that wouldn't be enough for me. If I had an apron on, I'd still get it on the sleeves and cuffs. An apron wouldn't come. Oh me yeah, up. yeah, yeah, yeah. An apron. The apron said on it uh, a knob of butter, but the word knob was massive, and the rest, the other words, were very tiny. <laughs> so I just wore an apron that said knob on it. Really. Which amused me. <laughs> Very childish. Then tell me about these acrylics then. Do, because I think a lot of the acrylics I use, and I think it may be I'm using really rubbish ones, but I would need to add white to them to to make them opaque when they're going on that black. Are you doing that? Uh yeah, there's tons of white on the uh, let me uh, let me bring this over and show you what's happening over here. Or can I? Right, so this is right. So that white. Oh, is that every, every, that's, every that's color you're that. using is getting mixed into the whites. Yeah, but also, right. I mean, I mean, what I find with acrylic is you just like it's very wasteful. We were talking about waste the other day, weren't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah. I like. I, I mean, a lot of this paint on this this palette will not be used. It will dry mm. up and won't be used tomorrow. And I mean, it's not especially expensive, but there is just something that feels slightly wasteful about it. And well, that's the thing, it isn't it? Because acrylic, once it's dried, you can just stick water on it and start painting yeah. again with it, can you? It's, it's dried, and that's yeah. it. Which is also, uh, as well, occasionally an advantage. You know, like you sort of use that. Like I just said over here, I'm going to wait for that to dry, and then that'll just be like painting onto the board again. So in a way, it, yeah. in contrast to sort of um, watercolor, there is always a get out. You know, you can actually fix anything. You might have to wait till tomorrow. Bear yeah, you just go off. off for it. Yeah, but I don't want that to be my approach, though. If you see what I mean, I, you know. Yeah. So here you can see, like I've done an orange here. It's kind of hard to get that black not to show through. I seem to remember yeah. sometimes with the night paintings, the next day I had to go through with a white brush just to make things ping a little bit. Right. Very pleased then to use the word ping rather than the word pop. Pop. Mm. Colours always pop now, don't they, with the Yeah. The yeah, they do.
<laughs> Why are you laughing at? But I've just added to the drawing. Um, <laughs> what's it say, Frip? <laughs> <laughs> you see, no, even if this drawing isn't quite the likeness, it makes me laugh. And it's, it makes me want to do one where it looks like him, but it's he's still got Frip tattooed on his forehead. Is it the equivalent of like when people do an impression, but the impression is just yeah. the person saying their name? Yeah, yeah. Margaret Thatcher here. Yeah. Oh, the, the famous catchphrase. Nice to see you to see you nice. So this is um, shaping up to be a very long Brentwood Tuxedo video. Well, sorry about that. Yeah, that's probably my fault. Well, Which is probably another reason why you, we, we should stop Darren always doing the night paintings on these things. Yeah. They are. I mean, that's, I mean, that's also, that sort of comforts me in a way because there was sort of, we were both sort of suggesting that, you know, Darren just puts two blobs of paint on, on a black a black board and then he's done. So so it does please me that they're taking a bit of longer because when yeah. I... Well my suggestion is that we bring this uh enjoyable episode to an end and then we just carry on chatting off camera. Okie dokie. Well I'm just I've got to finish um Robert Fripp's Forehead tattoo for us. If you are watching this at some point in the future and think, I really wanted to see how Darren's painting ended up, it will be it'll be somewhere on my Twitter feed. Yes, you'll see. And we may even maybe uh, in the, the next <laughs> video we just uh, we show people what you actually did. Okay. Yeah. Previously on Brentwood Tuxedo. <laughs> and then uh, show what happened. <laughs> So there we go. There's, well, I've done two frips. Well, I think you can kind of tell enough from my page what what is going, you know. I think you can tell where yeah. I'm going. Yeah, they're great. So they're great. It's, it's either two Robert Fripps <laughs> or it's Bruce Willis <laughs> and um, Derek Jacobi. What? Bruce Willis Derek and Derek Jacobi. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you can't win them all. It's okay when we say it. It is. Yeah, it's, it's exactly that. To be, cl- to be clear, what we're saying here, once again, to our audience, is when someone does an impression or when someone does a portrait, basically Reply Guy on Twitter will always say it looks like someone else. It yep. may well do. You know, it's like I don't think Darren's saying all my all all of your portraits look exactly like the person. No, nope. but just it's just such a fucking obvious joke that everyone always says. Yep, and it gets so tiresome. So don't say that to artists when they don't go say. Oh, see, so it looks like Bruce Forsyth. Even though <laughs> I did it, even though I did it to Darren and this. But right. Right. All right, good advice, Say goodbye. Bye, Darren. Bye, Darren. <laughs>